So in this video, I'm gonna take this reasonably and smartly spec Pelago Aristo and atb -ify it, if that's a verb. That's right, I'm gonna transform it from a dad wagon to a rad wagon with some choice Richie parts. How does it ride after the transformation? Did it change it a little or a lot? Let's go find out. If you missed my initial review of the Aristo, check out the video link below. But to quickly summarize, the Aristo is an all-rounder by the Finnish brand Pelago. It comes in a city-oriented and more touring-oriented build. And for the money, it's actually really nicely specced out. It comes with fenders, with dynamo lighting, with gearing that's appropriate for the task at hand. A couple of months ago, I took the Aristo on a mixed terrain overnighter here in Catalonia. And despite its city bike looks, it actually performed pretty well. But there were a few things that I wanted to, to change it to really make it a good mixed terrain tour. To, to do this transformation, I enlisted the help from our friends over at Ritchie. They sent over a pair of their Speedmax tires in 700 by 40, as well as their new, new buzzard bars. Initially, I thought this was going to be pretty straightforward, you know, remove the fenders, change the tires, swap the bars, one and done. But it turned out being a little trickier than I thought, namely because of the dynamo lighting. The Risto has both front and rear uh, dynamo lighting. You know, I've had bikes with front primarily, but since my plan was to put bigger tires, I would have to remove the fenders. That means losing the rear dynamo light as well as all the wiring that goes along with it. It took a little bit to kind of carefully undo the wiring. The way it works is the light has two pairs of leads. Uh, one pair goes straight to the dynamo and the other goes to the rear to, to send energy and electricity to the rear light. So with some careful coaxing, I managed to disconnect the rear light. You know, the, the wiring was routed through the frame, but still keep the front light connected by routing it uh, around the basket and down the rack into the dynamo hub. Next step was to swap out the fenders, uh, remove the kickstand, which to be honest, didn't work really well with the, the basket since it was just so floppy in the front. And I know I'm losing some practicality for the radness. So I swapped out the tires from the Schwabble G1 35 millimeter all, all round, all road tires to the Ritchie Speedmax 700 by 40 millimeter tires. That part was pretty straightforward. Although the Speedmax tires are tubeless compatible, uh, this bike is set up with tubes. And I have to say, it was kind of nice to swap tires without having to deal with a whole bunch of goop and, and all that mess. The next step was to swap out the city-ish bars for the new Ritchie Buzzard bars. While the two on the surface look similar, they're actually fairly different uh, in use. The Buzzard bars are much wider uh, and have more built-in rise. Interestingly, despite them having back sweep, they don't actually move you that far back. And I think this is because of that initial forward sweep. What that means is that I found myself running a fairly short uh, 60 millimeter stem to get about where I wanted. And even at that, I feel like I could go shorter still, like even a 40 or maybe even a 35 millimeter stem. So that's something to note that it's going to take a little bit of experimentation just to get the controls where you want them. So how did it ride? Was the difference big or small, noticeable, unnoticeable? Well, I took it on a 25 mile mixed train loop here in Girona that has a good mix of, you know, medieval cobbles, dirt roads, paved roads, and a little bit of single track. To the untrained eye, the bike might look relatively unchanged other than the lack of fenders, but the ride to me was night and day difference. Riding on the cobbles here in Baribel is usually an unpleasant and bone jarring experience, uh, especially on the 35 millimeter uh, Schwabble tires. But with the 40 millimeter Speedmax, it was actually a fairly noticeable difference. While the gain in width, let's say five millimeters is very nominal, you have to keep in mind that the overall volume of the tire increases quite a bit. What that means is that it gives me a much larger kind of range to play with the tire pressure. Overall, it was far less jarring of an experience on the cobbles as well as the rough stuff on this route. With the original tires, I always felt that it was a little bit underbikey on gravel, like not enough suspension, not enough grip. But with the Speedmax tires, it felt right at home. I was running them with tubes, so I couldn't get too wild with the tire pressures. I was keeping it in the upper 20s. If I were to run this tubeless, I'd probably dip into the mid 20s, if not the lower 20s for tire pressure, just to squeeze out the maximum suppleness. I think this was a perfect example of how much a tire change can completely affect the ride of your bike. After all, tires are the only part of the bike that actually touch the ground. In terms of the handlebars, moving from the long stem with narrowish bars 
to the short stem with wide bars also made a huge difference. First of all, my body weight was shifted back. And to me, that made the front steering a lot quicker and more nimble feeling. And, and less like I was aiming the bike than I was actually steering it. The increased width also made the bike easier to steer with the basket and the front load. It also generally gave me more of a sense of control, especially on descent. The original bars were, you know, they're fine. You know, they're a little narrow for me to give me confidence with the load. It definitely makes sense if you're going to do mostly urban riding, you know, live in tight quarters. But in terms of a dirt touring bar, I think the, the buzzer bars were a huge improvement. Speaking of the buzzer bars, they kind of acted like a multi-position bar. They're just so wide and there's, there's just so much of it. You can be at the ends of the bars and be more upright. You can choke it up and be in the middle and have a little bit more of a neutral position. Or you can grab onto the bends to get a little bit more arrow to get stretched out or to engage your glutes, especially when you're honking up a big climb uh, and, you're, and you're sitting down. Surprisingly, I was expecting more flex from the handlebars given their width, and I found that it gave a little, but not to the extent that I was expecting. I wouldn't call them stiff, but they're not like the flexiest bar out there which could be good or bad depending on your expectations and preferences. The width of the bars also made a great stable platform for honking up climbs when you're climbing. It just felt more natural and controlled than uh, doing a standing climb with narrower bars pitched more forward ahead of the steering axis. Uh, so, so for me, this experience was a bit of an eye-opener and sort of solidified the idea that a few key changes can really affect the ride of your bike. Change your tires, change your bike. Spending money on expensive group sets will have less effect on how the bike handles and how it feels than you would actually expect. If you want to actually alter how your bike feels, don't spend it on the group set. What do you guys think of this ATB transformation? Have you guys done something similar? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you like this focus on non-competitive cycling, or as we like to call it here, party pace as the sticker says, then join us on Patreon. You'll get discounts with brands that we love. You'll get the real deal behind the scenes of what it's been like to move here to Girona. If Patreon is too much of a commitment, I get it. Uh, you can pick up a sticker or a shirt from our store. On this channel, we do very little to no sponsorships. We don't get paid to do any bike or product reviews. This gives us ultimate editorial freedom, but it does take teamwork to make the dream work. So if you appreciate all that, you know what to do, all the links below. And as always, keep the supple side down.